sandpaper. Uh -huh. I'm going to use that and hopefully the camera picks it up. What's up guys? Welcome back to the shop. So I know it's been a long time since I've done a full-on documentation of a build where I do a video every single week or every other week of every little process that I'm doing on it. It's really boring and tedious. However, this is going to be a super cool build and it's going to be all new stuff that I've never done before. I have never done a four link, whether it's triangulated or just regular with a pan hard bar. I've never changed frames and modified frames. I've never put a Mustang II front end in. I haven't done air ride. I haven't even done turbos before. So this is all going to be a new build and I think I want to document it not only for you guys but for me. So please come along on this journey. What this journey is going to be is Project Twin Snail Mail and it is a 1965 Jeep mail truck. It's amazing. It's the ugliest, coolest looking thing you've ever seen. I've looked at this thing for probably close to 10 years sitting on the side of a shed out at a uh, relative's um, house or land out there. And I go, if you guys ever get rid of that, I want that. It's too ugly to just throw away, take the scrap. So we got it. The neighbor guy had uh, some 20s that came off of a half ton Dodge and they were already red. So that was already a plus. Bolted right up. Offset was within reason the exact same. Got some uh, Facebook tires, so we got those sitting on there. Had my buddy down at uh, Wheel Specialist, Jared, mount these 275 35s on an 8 inch rim. Thanks, bud. Internet says you can't do it or shouldn't do it, but they look just fine. I think it's going to be good to go. So, this episode, we're going to go ahead and get this thing kind of sitting where we want it, ride height, everything, and then we're also going to tear into the or drain the oil at least out of the motor, the six liter that's in the Chevelle because that motor is planned on going in here once we get the full forged rotating assembly motor built for the Chevelle. So that motor's got a slight oil pressure issue. So hopefully the, it didn't need a bearing. Hopefully it maybe is the pump going bad or maybe an O-ring or something. So we're gonna drain the oil out of that, which you'll see here shortly and hopefully the motor's good, solid, no metal in there, and we can just have a nice power plant to go in here that we can start measuring and getting everything figured out for the turbos. We do have a mock-up motor. I'm not 100% sure what I'm gonna do for trans yet. I do have a TH350 over here, but I think that's gonna go in the Winnebago. So I don't know, I got some, some uh, spending to do and some uh, thinking to do on that stuff, but I do have an ECU and a harness I uh, have uh, injectors and an intake and I should have a complete motor to go in here. I just got to figure out transmission. The rear end in this is a Dana 44 so that should be perfect uh, for what we want to do. And just got to figure out the uh, triangulated or four link and there's a lot of things to figure out. So we're going to be scratching our brains, we're going to be scratching our asses a lot and trying to just figure out what's going on. I got a cardboard piece over there that's got all the numbers, everything I measure, I write it down and just keep trying to figure out what the hell I'm doing. So don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Leave a comment down below. If you guys have ever done this before and you know what you're doing, please comment. Please help me out. Give me some advice on what I should be looking for or what I should be doing. Because right now, I'm just kind of winging it as to what feels right. Let's get to this. All right, guys, like I said earlier, the Chevelle motor that's in here, just a long block. You know, the go faster and shiny doodads are gonna go in snail mail. However, there is an oil pressure issue, so it's time to figure out if it is a bearing, maybe it's a pump, maybe it's no ring. I'm not 100% sure. It's kind of weird once it starts, once it warms up, the second it gets warm, it just, boom, loses oil pressure. Kind of weird. Now I think what we need to do is go ahead and get this thing jacked up. Let's drain the oil out of it and let's see what the oil looks like. And keep my fingers crossed that uh, it doesn't look like a pan of gold. So let's get her jacked up and take a look at it. Ugh. 
All right, so right off the bat, it looks less than ideal. So actually looks pretty similar to what the LS1 looked like when it uh, chewed up a rod bearing. So I'm betting that this uh, definitely had a bearing. We'll see what the oil holds once it's all drained out. Far, I gotta say that's looking pretty damn good. I mean, all things considering what I was expecting it to look like versus what it does, there's definitely bearing material in there, but it's it's not catastrophic like the other one. So I don't know what the deal is. Maybe it's a uh, O-ring issue or an oil pump issue. Once, I mean, there is some glitter in that, but it's very fine. So it's not catastrophic. There's a nice, nice one right up there. It's not catastrophic like the LS1 was, so. Don't hold it on the metal. You gotta hold it off the metal a little bit. You just gotta get it to spark to the metal to start. guys so we've been working over here on twin snail mail got some deer jerky here I'm gonna try not to chew on it while we're uh, talking on this uh, little recording here um, gotta be honest with you the uh, little cheap Amazon uh, plasma cutter that I had and I've had that for probably about three years now pretty much had given up on the thing because it cut like shit with a 120 um, now that I have the uh, 220 set up for the welder Decided so to say, hey, you know, let's go ahead and give it a try to cut these mounts off because it is a bitch grinding and using the death wheel to try to cut all this stuff off. Brought it over here, fired it up, put some air to it. <laughs> Thing cuts amazing. It's phenomenal. Greatest tool I've ever bought. I would highly recommend going to get one of these bad boys off of Amazon. I'll throw a link down below. This thing cuts through this on 220 like butter. It's a pile of hot garbage on 120. Don't even waste your time on that, but on 220, 240, whatever you want to call it, it's blowing through these mounts like crazy. Um, I had my son come out here trying to get him fired up and get him, you know, working on this stuff a little bit. And uh, I fucked up. I forgot to hook the air back up to it. So when he was running it, it was just, you know, just melt, basically melted the tip. So I have no more consumables for it. So I got to go buy some of those in the morning. 
Um, tried to grind it down to get it to work. It worked for a little bit, but still didn't work as good as it should. So I think at this point, where we're sitting on this bad boy, we got the front axle out, we got the wheels kind of sitting in here. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Um, I've got some quote unquote consultations with some buddies of mine. They're gonna come by and take a look and see what I think or what they think I should do on this. Um, that front frame rail is a little high probably for the Mustang 2 front end, so I'm gonna probably have to bring it down a little bit. So like Ben said, just run a couple of two by fours and just build a whole new frame. I don't wanna build a whole new frame because I've never built a frame before. I've never even done any freaking frame or chassis work before, but he's saying build a whole new frame. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. Right now, everything is sitting level-ish where it needs to sit. This is sitting at ride height within reason. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get some consumables, some tips for the uh, plasma cutter tomorrow. I'll roll this axle out. I'm gonna cut all the perches off, cut everything off the axle, get all that cleaned up and ground down, ready to go. So the axle will uh, be sitting in here, ready to go, ready to weld on whatever we go with, which will be a four link at that point. Mustang 2 front end, I need to get that ordered. Um, been talking up to Welder Up Series, I believe it is. And I think I've got things figured out, so I'm gonna go ahead and get that ordered here pretty quick. And then once, once that front end, Mustang 2 front end gets here, then it'll be like, all right, let's figure out where the hell that shit needs to fall. And if it's gonna have to be lowered so much, or so low that I'm gonna have to add shit to the bottom of the frame rails, then we're probably just gonna go with a straight two by four frame, ditch this frame and build a whole new frame, which I don't wanna do because it seems like a lot of work and I'm kinda lazy and I don't wanna do all that work. However, it would be cool to learn how to do all that but I don't really want to have to like just jump into a full frame. I'd like to just jump in and do a little suspension here, a little suspension there, and then build up to a whole frame. Not just like, oh, let's make a frame. Oh, let's do suspension. Oh, let's do this. Let's... And I've never done anything. So that is what it is at this point. So I'm going to keep cleaning things up and getting things moving, but we're going to call it a wrap for this one. I'm going to try to keep these episodes a little shorter. You know, maybe the five to 10 minute range, no more of the 15 to 30 minute videos and just try to put them out once a week or once every week and a half as things come in and as we get stuff done. So don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Check out our, our website, ftpspeedshop.com. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think about what we're doing and we'll check on the next one later.